sign literally just means an increase in your JVP with inspiration. It's always abnormal. Your JVP is meant to go down when you take a deep breath in. And the physiology of that's kind of easy to understand. If you take a deep breath in, what you're doing to get air into your lungs is you're creating a negative pressure in your chest. Now, as soon as I say pressure, people are going to zone out. So let's just keep it really simple. To move air or fluid or blood from one place to another, it has to go down a pressure gradient. How do you get air from outside in the atmosphere into your lungs? You have to basically suction it in, right? You have to make it go down a pressure gradient into your chest. So to create that suction into your chest, you have to basically create a negative pressure inside your chest. All right, that's all well and good. But when you take a deep breath in, that negative pressure inside your chest also affects your heart. Your heart in the medial steinum it just sits right in the center. So if you create a negative pressure, what you'll end up doing is you will also suction blood from your SVC and IVC, from your entire venous system into your SVC and IVC, and into your right atrium. Now, one of my favorite things to tell medical students is that your JVP is simply a barometer. It is a single column of blood that goes into your right atrium. What your JVP is basically telling you is your right atrial pressure. That's all the JVP is. It's a single column of blood that goes from right atrium to the SVC to the internal jugular vein. So let's play it out. You take a deep breath in. That results in you suctioning in blood uh, to your right atrium. So you increase your venous return to the right atrium. and therefore the right ventricle. And if you have normal physiology and a normal pericardium, your right atrium and right ventricle just dilate out a little bit to absorb the extra blood and everything's fine. You get transiently an increased blood flow to the right side of the heart. And actually you can, you already know about this because when you heard about listening to murmurs, someone told you at some point, I'll bet, that when you take a deep breath in, you will exaggerate right-sided murmurs. There's that uh, little, Mnemonic that goes around, Lexrin, left-sided murmurs in expiration, right-sided murmurs in inspiration, and this is the reason behind it. Your right-sided murmurs are exaggerated in inspiration because you increase your right-sided blood flow when you take a deep breath in because of this little bit of physiology. But that's what happens with a normal pericardium. But what if your pericardium isn't so normal? What if you have constricted pericarditis? Now, constricted pericarditis is a condition associated with previous radiotherapy to the chest or previous chronic viral pericarditis or previous cardiothoracic surgery. Anything that causes chronic inflammation in the pericardium can do this. Basically, it results in you having a thicker pericardium that nor than normal, which may be calcified, and sometimes you can see calcification around the heart on a chest x-ray, which can point to this. But that thickened, sometimes calcified pericardium acts like a cage around the heart. It's like a rock straitjacket around the heart. And it has two effects. What it'll end up doing is it'll prevent your heart from expanding. So your heart can't expand when you take a deep breath in and it fills with blood. But secondly, that rock cage around the heart isolates the heart from the changes in pressure inside your chest cavity. So you take a deep breath in, but your cardiac pressures are basically isolated from that. However, when you take a deep breath in, you're still suctioning in blood to fill the SVC and IVC. And that blood's got to go somewhere. If it can't enter the right atrium because the heart can't expand, then what will end up happening is it'll just make that column of blood, that barometer in your neck, congest with blood and your JVP will go up as you take a deep breath in. So now that makes sense. That's why it's happening in constricted pericarditis. But now you're probably wondering why the hell is that not happening with tamponade? I thought it's the same kind of thing. You've surrounded the heart with a, with a bag full of fluid as opposed to a rock-like bag. Why are we not getting the same changes with tamponade? Well, the physiology in tamponade is very slightly different. Your heart is compressed by a bag of fluid. And fluid is really, really good at transmitting pressures. So what ends up happening in tamponade is that instead of your heart being isolated from the pressure inside your chest, it becomes even more susceptible to it. So when you take a deep breath in in tamponade, not only do you get increased blood entering the right atrium, that blood then enters the right ventricle and the pressures transmit so readily inside the heart that your right ventricle tries to increase in size, but of course you've got a bag of fluid around the heart, which prevents it from expanding outwards, and it'll push the interventricular septum towards the left ventricle. And like I explained in the tamponade video, when you take a deep breath in, that means you drop your 
left ventricular filling and therefore your left ventricular outflow and your blood pressure drops when you take a deep breath in, in a phenomenon which you now know is pulses paradoxus, which is an exaggeration of physiology. And actually, because your heart is even more susceptible to those changes in pressure, that's why pulses paradoxus is such a logical outcome. Pulses paradoxus is an exaggeration of normal physiology. So I want you to remember one thing which is that Kussmaul sign is associated with constrictive pericarditis. The Kerr sounds go together, and that's the easiest way to remember this if you forget everything else from this talk. And Kussmaul sign very, very definitely does not happen in cardiac tamponade. What Kussmaul sign shows is that you have some restriction in right ventricular function in particular that prevents it from handling the increase in right-sided blood flow that comes with inspiration. Now, the archetype of that is actually constricted pericarditis, but it can happen with anything that causes right ventricular dysfunction. So restrictive cardiomyopathy can do this. Right ventricular infarction can give you a Kussmaul sign as well. So in summary, you are not likely to get Kussmaul sign with tamponade clinically. Conversely, you are really unlikely to get pulses paradoxus with constricted pericarditis. So I'm sorry if that was a little bit mean. It's a kind of a classic finally question, a little bit advanced, I suppose. Just to make you aware, a lot of medical student resources actually get this completely wrong. So Kussmaul sign is definitely not possible with tamponade. It's been shown definitively in lots of really seminal studies. I can point you to the references if you're really interested, but it definitely cannot happen. And yet a lot of medical student kind of revision guides and stuff have this wrong in them. So just be on the lookout for that. And the converse of that, pulses paradoxus is a very, very good sign in tamponade. It's very unlikely in constrictive pericarditis. It can happen. It's just very unlikely, but not impossible. And hopefully you'll now be able to explain to someone else the physiology behind it. The bag of fluid around the heart transmits the pressures inside your chest to the ventricle and makes your ventricle much more susceptible to the minor variations you would normally get with inhaling and exhaling. And it means that when you take a deep breath in, your right ventricle just shoves the left ventricle out of the way and decreases your cardiac output. Whereas with constrictive pericarditis, it's like your heart is caged away, away from the pressure in the chest, not being affected by it, and unable to really fill because your right ventricle and right atrium cannot take in any blood. So when you take a deep breath in, that blood just ends up in a big column in the neck, which you can see as an elevated JVP when you take a deep breath in, which is the opposite of what should be happening. The JVP should be going down when you take a deep breath in. I hope that makes sense. However, if you don't like pressures and cardiology and just hate all of this kind of talk, and you've got to this bit in the video, just remember, Kussmaul's goes with constrictive pericarditis. The cur sounds go together.